All right, grab your cocoa, your coffee, or in my case, your English breakfast tea, and settle down next to this warm 8-bit fire because we're gonna go over some predictions and some resolutions for 2024 when it comes to 3D printing. Mm. Nice. All right, let's start off with the predictions, what I think most of you have come here for. So 2023 was an amazing year and a lot of new printers came out that pushed advancements in speed, reliability, and I think we're gonna see a lot of that in the upcoming year in 2024 as well. So let's start off with speed. With printers like the T1 and S1 from FL Sun, we're gonna see speeds upwards of 1,000 millimeters per second and 1,200 millimeters per second. As always, these are their top speeds. They're not the operating speeds that you'll always get with printers. But again, to even see printers that can get up to that speed, that's pretty impressive. And those are gonna be in the consumer range as well. I think we're gonna to continue to see lower cost printers continue to push that speed as well. We already saw the Ender 3 V3 SE touting a 250 millimeters per second speed this year. And the KE, its older brother, pushing around 500 millimeters per second. I think that's really impressive for the entry-level price point that those two printers sit at. With all of these speed increases, filament will need to keep up as well. So make sure to keep checking back to Micro Center for our line of high-speed filament that we're gonna continue to launch throughout 2024. My second prediction for 2024 is that we are going to see some more multicolor or multi-material systems introduced. We've seen what I think is the best, or at least in my humble opinion, the Bamboo Labs AMS come out with their X1 Carbon and their P1 series, and the AMS Lite coming out with their A1 series. Both of these, in my opinion, are one of the best out-of-the-box experiences for multicolor, multi-material printing. I'm sure we'll see the likes of other companies like Creality, Elegoo, and even any Qubit coming out potentially with uh, multi-material this year. Um, at least I hope so. There have been some other options out there already, whether they were add-ons or another part of a system. But again, for me, the bamboos really set the stage for how multi-material should work within an ecosystem. My third prediction for this year is that reliability is going to continue to improve. And what I mean by that is that over the past decade that 3D printers have been out, being able to take a printer home, unbox it, and get reliable prints consistently hasn't always been a thing until the last couple of years, especially for novices who haven't been in the industry for a while. Up until recently, we've seen printers such as the V3 SE uh, and all of the Bamboo line of printers and a lot of the others uh, that have taken reliability and being able to print out of the box to the next level. I think it's gonna rely on a couple of things. I think the slicer is going to be an important part of this. So as people tend to use slicers like Orca Slicer more often, as they tend to use the built-in slicers that come with the printer, that are set for their printers, I think they're going to continue to see reliability improve. I also think as people become more educated about how 3D printers work and they're able to set their expectations in terms of what the printer can and cannot do, the reliability will easily increase in that regard as well. I think that also a part of the reliability conversation comes into how filament's handled. And I think with this year seeing the introduction of the AMS, uh, and other storage solutions for 3D printing filament, we were able to see that if you take care of your filament, you can make that filament last a good bit longer. Um, so one of my predictions is we will see a bunch of new filament storage options, which will allow you to keep those filaments at the right humidity and keep them organized and allow you to switch easier without having to take the filament spool off of the printer and then put it on again. A lot of times what people don't realize when they first get into 3D printing is that if you don't handle the spool with respect, uh, it can tangle on you uh, and then you'll get pinches as you go to print things. You won't have consistency in that regard. So hopefully finding solutions to help take that out of the user's hands uh, is another great way we can improve reliability. One of the things that I hope to see is the extinction of the bed leveling wheels. Even with the Ender 3 V3 SE from Creality, we no longer have the bed leveling wheels. And now we're relying on their CR Touch and a height sensor underneath the bed to make sure that it's just at the right height. Now, you can still set some of the Z offsets there if you're not getting exactly what you want, but for the most part, out of the box, you should get a great first layer relying on that offset sensor and on the CR Touch. So again, 2024, let's see those bed leveling gears go away completely. All right, so my last prediction for 2024 is around price. 
And I think what's gonna happen is two things. I think we've already hit a pretty low end of the spectrum uh, with things like the Creality 3 Ender 3 V3. Boy, we're talking about that a lot in this video, aren't we? At roughly 179, right? But in my mind, I think there is an option where we see a printer at roughly $99, no coupon necessary, that normally would have cost back in the day maybe $299 or more. So I think we're getting there. I don't think we're quite at the bottom, but I think we're already pretty close. On the other side of the spectrum, I also think that there is an appetite for printers between $1,500 and let's say $2,500. Bamboo with their X1C has already proved that people are interested in a printer that given the feature set, they're willing to spend the money to get that. So. $1,500 for a 3D printer in this price point with these features uh, is not such a crazy thing to think of. So I do think that there is uh, an appetite out there in the 3D printing community in the prosumer range, uh, maybe not all the way up to $3,000 right now, but maybe for that $2,000 to $2,500 range. Now on to the resolutions for 2024 when it comes to 3D printing. These are my personal resolutions and we'd love to see not only your predictions for 2024, but also your 3D printing resolutions in the comments below. So let's get started. Resolution number one, I'm gonna do my best this year to use up entire spools of filament. Now what I mean by that is a lot of times I'll get to the end of the spool and there may only be a few meters left on that spool. So there's two ways I can approach this. One is going to be finding some smaller prints that I can print that are useful. Or if you happen to have the Bamboo Labs X1C with the AMS unit, you can actually set it to go from one spool to the other whenever it runs out. We have a gentleman here at Micro Center who likes to print a lot of the Cinderwing stuff. And what he'll do is he'll basically tell a whole bunch of spools inside of his AMS that they're all the same color so they can continue once run one runs out. I think it's a great way to use up that filament. So try to use up all the filament you can so it doesn't go to waste this year. Resolution number two. I am going to try to spend more time this year improving my 3D modeling skills. My favorite 3D modeling app is Shaper 3D, and I do that on my iPad with the Apple Pencil. I love this setup. I can do it from wherever. I don't necessarily have to be behind a computer desk. I can be hanging out on the couch, working on some models, grab a pair of digital calipers, and boom, Bob's your uncle. You're off to the races, and you're making some cool models. So more modeling this year in 2024. And my third resolution for this year is to continue to provide you, our Micro Center customers, more awesome content. So if you've made it this far in the video, make sure to like and comment below with your predictions for 2024 when it comes to 3D printing or really anything maker. Also, if you have any resolutions you're going to be doing for 3D printing, leave them in the comments below as well. And as always, if you want a Micro Center near you, make sure to hashtag I want a Micro Center near me. That's it for today, and we will see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.